Hi all, and welcome to the Emergent Vision Technologies High Speed Imaging Presentation. I am John Allett, President, CTO, and Company Founder, and I would like to present our perspective on high speed imaging. Some highlights about Emergent are presented here. We are a multi award winning company with a focus on high speed Gigi Vision product. We have many years shipping product ranging in speeds from 10 Gigi up to 100 Gigi. We have a strong focus on providing end-to-end -end technologies and support for customers' applications. We can fulfill most application needs. Lastly, products presented are available now. Here is a quick snapshot of the adoption of Gigi Vision products ranging in speeds from 10 Gigi up to 100 Gigi. Emergent has shown how top performance can be achieved and opened up many markets, including machine vision, to the use of such technologies. Some companies are just now leveraging our efforts towards releasing 25 gig and higher speed product, but still a ways to go to release ratified and performance product. We will take a moment to understand the technology behind Gigi Vision. GVSP is the ethernet streaming protocol used in the current standard. A stream is made up of multiple frames or images. Each frame is made up of a leader packet, multiple image or payload packets, and a trailer packet. All packets follow the UDP Ethernet protocol, which is an unconnected protocol. This simply means that the camera sends the packets and leaves the receiver to do its job of placing the data in the destination buffer. Being an unconnected protocol, this means it has zero network overhead, which leads to maximum network performance. It also means fundamentals like multicasting are supported. We must properly design our receiver to avoid data loss. CXP also follows the same protocol and leaves the receiver to its job of placing the data in the destination buffer. This leads to top performance and lowest latency and jitter with a quality receiver. I will note that the inability of some companies to design a quality receiver has led them down alternate paths. Conventional GVSP uses header splitting and software to strip the headers off the GVSP packets and place the image data from the payload packets into a contiguous memory buffer. This process raises CPU usage, but more importantly eats up three times the system memory bandwidth usage over a zero copy implementation. This results in a 33% efficiency for the system, which factors into system cost in a number of ways. This is an example of a poorly designed receiver, and many in the market are still doing this even at 10 gig E. But we still see cases where some companies have trouble running multiple 1 gig E cameras in a single server, all related to poor receiver design. Optimized GVSP uses header splitting in hardware available in off-the-shelf performance NICs and other processing devices. This is the same method used in SMPTE 2110 in the massive media and entertainment markets, which also has zero tolerance for data loss. In this market, they rely on well-designed receivers and as such, the off-the-shelf NICs provide header splitting technologies which are used in streaming implementations like SMPTE 2110, but also in message and connected protocols like RDMA and Rocky. We work with the same vendors who support RDMA and Rocky to use header splitting to achieve the most feature-rich and highest performance receiver, while adhering to the current and highly mature GigiVision specification. Some vendors have trouble with header splitting technologies, either in implementing or in achieving performance so they look for other solutions. Some also try to rely on very low cost NICs or even low performance motherboard resident chips, which is dangerous for applications like wafer processing, which incur a high penalty if problems are seen. One proposal is to use TCP. This connected protocol offers limited advantages over UDP. TCP offers resends and flow control for more reliable transfer but this impacts performance as well as induces latency and jitter. TCP still requires data copies, and since it is a connected protocol, it has overhead, 
which offsets the advantage of reliable transfer as cameras are added to the system. This may be okay for lower performance systems, but running many cameras on a single system will hardly provide guaranteed performance. A properly designed and margin system based on UDP, even without hardware header splitting, will do just as well. Performance is never guaranteed unless a system is well designed and margined. CXP does not use resends and flow control and has optimal receiver performance, latency and jitter. So why does GigiVision need this? One reason is insufficient physical buffering on some NIC cards. They cannot cope with the OS fluctuations. Another is poor bit error rate performance. Good news is that quality NICs have ample physical buffering like CXP to deal with this. Bit error rate, frankly, is only an issue in very poorly designed, low-cost product. But the reality is that a properly tuned server, including bias changes in concert with properly written receiver code, is important in all cases. Like with UDP, some vendors are looking to RDMA to avoid a header splitting implementation. These are the same vendors who have trouble working with more than two 10 giggy cameras in a system and frankly have trouble with multi-camera systems based on one giggy. RDMA achieves zero copy transfer to the image buffer. That's good. Like TCP, RDMA is a connected technology, so it incurs overhead and will limit scalability. Performance is never guaranteed unless a system is well designed and margined. RDMA offers resends and flow control for more reliable transfer, but this, like TCP, impacts performance as well as induces latency and jitter. RDMA, like TCP, also cannot support a fundamental networking technology like multicasting. RDMA is basically a zero copy TCP or even USB. Both RDMA and TCP are point-to-point -point technologies. So one might ask, why use GigiVision instead of CXP or USB, especially given the much improved cost performance ratios for FPGAs as used in CXP frame grabbers and emergence own cards? I remind that with the same NIC used for RDMA, we can also leverage the header splitting feature of the card to keep GigiVision standard intact for limitless integration. Another important reality is that flow control and resends for TCP and RDMA work with the use of buffering in the camera. Regardless of where it is, be it in the camera or the card, buffering is the fundamental requirement for reliable transfer. Further, in any design, be it using UDP, TCP, RDMA, or even CXP. If these protective buffers overflow, then you will lose data. This slide highlights the point about multicast technologies. GigiVision plus GVSP is currently the only protocol which supports this fundamental networking feature. Other standards will be quickly dismissed in applications requiring efficient redundancy and distributed processing. This slide is an illustration of how the proposed or ratified changes are converging the interface standards. USB remains mostly the same, but is a point-to-point -point technology. CXP has adopted the Ethernet physical layer, converging towards GigiVision. GigiVision plus RDMA and GigiVision plus TCP, if and when ratified, is converging to CXP and USB as a point-to-point -point technology. This is perhaps two years out. GigiVision plus GVSP will maintain its integrity and feature set and will not converge with the other protocols. So let's say we now have our data safe in system memory by whatever means. Now what do we do with it? I have touched on this idea on earlier slides, and it seems to be not even part of the discussion of those working to modify the GigiVision standard to add RDMA or TCP. For some applications, the CPU and system memory are a sufficient resource. For other performance applications, using multiple 100 giggy, 25 giggy, or even 10 giggy cameras 
Real-time processing requires offloading the task to more well-suited processing nodes. CPUs and their system memory often cannot cope. Does RDMA and TCP matter now? The answer is no, as the cards can equally process GVSP. Let's look at some examples and understand why. GPU Direct is a fantastic technology and in use by many of our customers in ALI, drone, VR, and sports applications to name a few. In this case, the CPU and system memory remain untouched, while the data is transferred directly to the GPU from the NIC. On Linux, many things like this are possible, with many GPUs with arbitrary NICs. NVIDIA GPUs on Windows only allow GPU Direct from Mellanox NICs using RiverMax for selected partner vendors like Emergent. RDMA does not support GPU Direct here. With 80% of machine vision applications being on Windows, it does limit others looking to implement this feature. Emergent has supported this feature for over two years. Similar to the previous slide, NVIDIA has merged NICs with processing resources to enable a single slot solution. Future models are expected as NVIDIA focuses on high performance computing. As an NVIDIA partner, Emergent has access to all of these technologies. These technologies are also not limited to a single video stream, but can handle multiple streams limited only by the resources of the device. Within the machine vision space, we look to companies like Matrox and Goodell who offer FPGA processing cards with Gigi Vision plus GVSP front ends to allow seamless integration with Emergent cameras. GPUs have their place as processing nodes, but often FPGA cards can handle the workload more efficiently. Customers can leverage vendor IP for quicker time to market. These technologies are also not limited to a single video stream, but can handle multiple streams limited only by the device resources. One of the nice things about Ethernet is the vast cross-industry resource pool we can draw from. Xilinx is one such vendor we work closely with to provide advanced processing resources. To integrate with emergent cameras, a customer could take their current GigiVision core and port this to one of many cards like Xilinx Alveo, which already has the same interface as our cameras. For those new to GigiVision drivers, we can provide ported firmware and drivers for the cards like these to get you up and running quickly and let you focus on the particulars of your application. With a quick search, you will become aware of the abundance of FPGA code resources at your disposal. These technologies are also not limited to a single video stream, but can handle multiple streams limited only by the device resources. Emergent begins its foray into the PCIe card space, which provides certain benefits to our customers like intelligent image reordering, routing, and expanded buffers. In addition, we have customers that wish to avoid switches in their setups, with cameras spaced far apart and at distances suitable for fiber. Yet they still want tight synchronization. Our front port trigger with action command for image triggering satisfies this need. Developing our own cards also allows us to manage the full supply chain for our typical customer applications, as well as maintain strict quality control. Emergent will also look to develop advanced processing cards to fulfill the needs of our customers, as well as application-specific modules to reduce time to market. These technologies are also not limited to a single video stream, but can handle multiple streams, limited only by the device resources. We have presented this setup during a few online presentations, as well as at trade shows like NAB Las Vegas and also at Vision Show in Stuttgart this past month. The system is by far the highest performance and highest density solution in the market. The system has zero data loss, taking in 210 gigabits per second of image data and storing it to eight U.2 NVMe drives. The server is a single mid-range AMD and ASUS server configuration that runs our eCapture Pro performance software. 
some customers wish to take this setup and add GPUs in the available slots to perform real-time processing. We have customers who have scaled systems up to 250 plus cameras in a single system using our 25 gig E cameras. This exemplifies the ease of scalability. As mentioned, we have customers that wish to avoid switches in their setups. Switches can be more costly starting at about $7,000 for a 48 port 25 gig plus 8 port 100 gig configuration through our partner network, but help to reduce the overall system cost substantially. Smaller configurations like 18 port 25 gig plus 4 port 100 gig are available as well. The switch market is also getting more competitive as more companies come to market with 25 gig and 100 gig and PTP support. You can count on Emergent for support in switch supply and configuration. eCapture Pro is built on top of Emergent's ESDK and is the glue that allows us to achieve the highest performance in the market. Processing node technologies are being added and supported for custom performance deployable systems. Our cameras are everywhere you care to look. We dominate in certain spaces where adoption rate is more rapid. We believe other spaces will follow, especially where factors such as performance, cost sensitivity, system simplicity, and time to market are at play. As you can see, Emergent has the highest performance product portfolio, and we keep our overall product portfolio focused. We innovate, develop, adapt, and expand the markets we enter and have the foresight to do so. Please do contact us for further details and we appreciate you taking the time to view our presentation.